Hey guys, Richard Holder here. I'm very excited about my first official clickbait title. And if you look closely, it's actually a double clickbait. Now I've never done this before and I always want to try it because I'm excited and it's new for me. Now I'm not political and I know nothing about the stock market, but I do know how to make power. And later on, I'm going to change the title because I want people searching for the Holly two barrels and Holly four barrels and headers and small block Chevys. But here's the question for today. How much power is it worth going from a two barrel to a four barrel carburetor? And can you really get 20, 30, even 40 foot pounds of torque from headers? Let's find out. In this video, we're going to take a look at a comparison between a Holly two barrel carburetor and a Holly four barrel carburetor, and not just any Holly two barrel, but the 4412 class specific 500 CFM two barrel. And we're going to compare it first to a Holly 750 carburetor and then to a Holly 650 carburetor on a different combination. So we have a two barrel versus four barrel on one combination, a two barrel versus a four barrel on another combination. And we also have two different intake manifolds. One test was run on a single plane intake. One test was run on a dual plane intake. In addition to that, we also have a cool header comparison. We ran a set of inch and five eighths chassis specific headers, in this case for a race car, a dirt track race car, compared to our typical inch and three quarter dyno headers. So we have a change in primary diameter. We have a change in collector diameter. It's all good stuff. So let's take a look. This was an interesting test. I wanted to show what happens when we compare a two barrel to a four barrel combination. And obviously the answer is a four barrel makes more power. So we'll jump right to the, we'll jump right to the conclusion and tell you that that's not surprising. I mean, a four barrel has more flow. It can make more power. But the interesting thing is the difference between the two and where we see the power differences and, and how we're able to gain power once we limit this thing basically with a two barrel. Now this was a short track motor and this was a motor Motor that came out of a car running a local series and it wasn't one that we built or anything it was just it came out of a, a friend's um, race car and so we told them we would put it on the dyno and I wanted to run some testing with it basically this was a small block 350 it was 30 over it had a set of factory replacement pistons in it meaning it had a small dish with four valve reliefs it had a set of fuely heads on it but they were the small valve so they were a 194 uh, 15 exhaust combination the heads were unported and they were not milled this thing had a um it did have a steel shim head gasket on it so it had a thin head gasket it was run with a torque or two intake manifold a lock distributor and a 750 holly carburetor we also had inch and three quarter long tube dyno headers on it and as i said the distributor was locked and we played with timing and and uh jetting on the four barrel just to optimize the power output i'm not sure about the cam timing on this we think it was an extreme energy 268 hydraulic flat tap it but um we did not verify it because we didn't we didn't take the camshaft out of this combination before we did the after or before we're doing the modifications and that 268 cam that's what the owner remembers what was in there it was a 477 480 lift a 224 230 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle so run with the stock fuely heads and a torque or two and a 750 on uh, this um, 355 produced 350 horsepower 349.7 and 395 foot pounds of torque. This is with the four barrel. Here's what happened when we installed the two barrel Holly. Obviously we lost a, a, a good bit of power. This was a spec carb for the racing class, which I think is a 4412. And we, again, we did some jetting, but we didn't find a lot with jetting in this combination with the torque or two intake. The power output dropped with the two barrel down to 306 horsepower, peak torque was down to 367 foot-pounds. And it's interesting, note that the power was down everywhere. The, the, even though 500 CFM uh, carburetor is enough airflow to support this power level, um, and normally we see from airflow changes uh, less of a gain down low and more of a gain at the top, the two barrel never matched the power output of the four barrel, even down low. So that was a little bit surprising. But uh, in seeing this big change, we're like, okay, this is <laughs> this is not good. But this is the power that you were making when you were racing, because that's the condition that the motor was or the that the motor was in with that two barrel carburetor. Here's how we can now improve the power output of your combination. The first thing we did was 
put a performer RPM air gap intake manifold on it. In this RPM range below 2000 RPM, which is where he was running the motor while he was racing, a dual plane is a much better choice than a single plane. This thing makes, obviously, in, in if you can take a look at the red versus the green here, with the performer RPM air gap, the power output jumped to 325 horsepower, basically cutting our power difference between the two barrel and the four barrel in half. So it made 325 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 385 foot pounds of torque. So nearly matching the torque output below 3,500 to the four barrel combination. So this was a good step up. The RPM air gap is a really good combination on a small block Chevy for this kind of power range. And we also on the dual plane adjusted the two barrel carburetor. It, it had a slide on the adapter. Uh, because all we did was run the we ran the two barrel carburetor on the four barrel flange with an adapter and we were able to slide the carburetor back and forth and that showed a little bit of a power gain adjusting the position the center line basically of the carburetor relative to the opening of the manifold here's the final thing that we did We did some adjustments on the two barrel carburetor. We started playing uh, with jets and stuff and we were able to tune a little bit more power out of it, not a lot. We didn't change the peak torque at all, but we did change the peak horsepower, uh, 327 horsepower. So we were able to eke a little bit more out of it by um, by fine tuning the jets, as I said, and, and adjusting the position of the carburetor. So there's a little bit more power there, but obviously in this case, and as we'll see in most cases in the next one also, a four barrel makes more power than a two barrel. And uh, it basically made more power from 3,500 all the way out to 6,000, which is kind of what we would expect. <laughs> Let's take a look at our next combination. To illustrate once again, the differences between the two barrel and the four barrel, I ran that test again, this time on a slightly more powerful combination. This one was the same, it was a same 355 inch motor. It had the same factory replacement style dish pistons with four valve reliefs. This one had a set of Vortec heads, unported, but they were milled. Um, it had a, obviously a spring upgrade. Now this thing had a much better camshaft in it. They wouldn't tell me because these are the top secret <laughs> <laughs> their top secret circle track cam. Uh, they just called it a 246 cam. Um, we had beehive springs on this. It also was run with a set of roller tip rockers. It was run with a dual plane RPM style air gap. I think that this one was actually the one from Speedmaster. It had the, it had a uh, 44 or yeah 4412 Holly XP carburetor on it because we had upgraded the carburetor to the newer style. It had a Wilson uh, adapter, two barrel to four barrel adapter. And again, we adjusted that around. This particular combination was run first with a four barrel. And this was a 650 um, Ultra XP carburetor. Uh, and maybe could, there could have been a little bit more power with a 750, although uh, I'm not sure about that. The 650, we've run a lot more power than that. At uh, it, a lot more power with a 650 than this, but this is what was run on the dual plane to start out with. And then we would compare that to the um, XB4412 two barrel carburetor. So run with the four barrel, this uh, cammed 355 basically with um, the uh, Vortec heads, but not ported, they were stock, uh, just milled. And this combination produced 417 horsepower and 424 foot-pounds of torque. Now here's what happened when we installed the uh, 4412 XP two-barrel 500 CFM carburetor. As we, as we did before, we lost power compared to the four-barrel and that's normal. This combination produced 383 horsepower and 409 foot-pounds of torque. And once again, you can see that we, we lost power basically everywhere, even down to 3000 RPM, the two barrel, the 500 CFM two barrel made less power than the four barrel did, even down at 3000 RPM. And then as normally happens, the the power differences increased with RPM out at 6000, they were quite a bit. But here's an interesting thing. Um, we also ran, now this was run with the headers that were in the um, in the chassis. They're basically the chassis, we wanted to test this combination with the headers that they run while they're racing to find out what the motor's actually doing. And, and there's a good good reason that we did this, and I'll show you that uh, right now. But run with these headers, and these were inch and five eighths, 
with a three inch collector and a three inch collector extension run the way that the motors run in the chassis while they're racing. But what we did was put our dyno headers on this thing. And you can see, I'm going to get rid of the, um, we'll get rid of the two barrel one. So this is a comparison run, both of them, both of them with the four barrel. So we compared the, the chassis headers basically to the dyno headers that we normally run. The normally, the, the dyno headers that we run are inch and three quarter. They have a three and a half inch um, collector. And then we normally run a three and a half inch collector extension, 18 to 20 inches long on the dyno. Sometimes we'll run mufflers and that works out also. But we ran the, we did a direct comparison between the headers, the inch and five eighths with three inch collectors and extensions versus the inch and three quarter to three and a half with collector extensions. And here's what happened. The interesting thing is that we see a big change in the power curve um, from 4500 on out to 6000 there's basically no change in power so the inch and 5 8 headers didn't hurt peak power at all but the inch and three quarter headers made a lot less power from 3000 to 4400 rpm there was a big drop in power and this obviously isn't flow this is the scavenging effect <laughs> from the change in header design. We had, we had a number of things happening here. One, we had a different length primary. We had a different diameter primary. And what I think the big thing is we had a different size collector. Um, now we had the same length collector extension. We just had a different diameter because those headers ended in three and a half inch collectors and we had a three and a half inch collector extension. On the inch and five eighths headers, they had three inch collectors with three inch collector extensions again, the same length, but just a different diameter. But it goes to show you, <laughs> this would be very important in the car while it was running, because as you go to get on the throttle, if you're down at lower engine speeds, the smaller headers would actually provide better acceleration in that range because they're making a lot more torque and it doesn't hurt you at all on the top end. Interesting stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from our testing on these different small block Chevys with the two barrel and the four barrel and the different size headers? First of all, we, we learned that we all should have invested in AMC and GameStop long ago, but I didn't. And I hope that you guys did and I hope that everybody made a ton of money. But what we learned from this testing is that it's really easy to get lots of power, much easier with a four barrel than it is with a two barrel, but it's also possible to get power with a two barrel. And this is the kind of stuff I like. If you just look at the power numbers and go, hey, that's a 350 or a 400 horsepower small block, that's not very exciting. But I'll tell you what is exciting about this kind of stuff. I like when there's some sort of imposed uh, limitation on this stuff, like with the two barrel, okay, it only flows this amount of air. Now what do racers do and engine builders, now what do they do to improve the power output given that limitation? They have to start looking at other things. You have to look at what intake works best in that sort of restricted environment. You have to look at what cylinder heads do, obviously within the rules and limitations that they oppose in that particular class, but you have to look at that. You have to look at how much power do the valve springs take up. You have to obviously look at cam timing because that's very critical. So stuff with really tight LSAs will improve power in that RPM range. You have to look at the available displacement, the available compression. You have to, you know, minimize losses in the rotating weight and all kinds of stuff. Also, the oiling system, very important. Things like windage trays and, cra and crank scrapers and all that stuff. In fact, you have to look at absolutely everything when they have that kind of limitation on you, which I think is exciting. That's what makes the racing world so exciting. When you put these limitations, guys start thinking outside the box and finding power where nobody found power before. And that's very exciting. Armature Holder, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More and more testing coming up.